Hello, and this would be part 28 of my RTS tutorial series. Uh, this is GUI making, um, more GUI stuff. We haven't done that in a while, so we're going to be going back to some code we have not touched in an extremely long time. Um, we need a good amount of editing, but only one new image, and it is so easy to make. Uh, one old image we need to rename. Uh, you need to go, I, uh, it's, it's like a unit. Uh, it's a button, and the button should look like your worker, so that when you make, uh, when you go into the GUI, so it looks like mine looks like this, just a button that signifies making of your uh, worker. Find that and rename it something useful if you have not already. Mine was like Sprite 31. Instead, I named it to button underscore worker. And the other image is literally made by hitting the Sprite button or little red Pac-Man, and then naming it blank. That's all you have to do. Um, reason being is we need a 32 by 32 pixel sprite that is completely invisible. That's what blank will do, and it does a good job. Instead of saying messing with the visible variable, this is a lot easier since it's this the image needs to be able to go from visible to uh, invisible like that. So we just have a sprite, and it's a spot holder too because it also needs to keep the coordinate right. So we have um, two new objects uh, worker underscore counter and worker underscore tracker it is better if you create both objects and just don't touch them uh, edit them before you actually start making it so make both objects and then go into worker underscore tracker and set its sprite to the button underscore worker or whatever you named your sprite that acts as the worker button and then in the step event you have some code uh, here we go um, first we test, uh, the purpose of the GUI, uh, uh, is to show how many of a certain unit you have selected. In this case, we're going to be doing the workers, and only the workers. You'll need to do this whole process over again for, uh, fighters and whatnot, but it's extremely easy once you do the first one. You can literally just duplicate and change a couple words, and changing words is so easy. For instance, you need to change, um, workers into uh, fighters and you can just hit replace all and it will do that for you you get to the uh, find and replace using the magnifying glass right here uh, so that's really easy you can switch in a couple of seconds and it will keep your setting in the text uh, uh, code editor so you can just go between pieces of code and change it change it change it change it and you're all set now um, so we want this in the GUI and some may want it all the time to have all your units up there. I do not. I want only the units that are selected currently to be in the GUI showing me the number at that time. And nothing else can be in the menu. So the only time the menu is blank is when the variable global.menu equals zero. So we put in the statement if global.menu equals zero to start it off and then we go into the actual uh, B for the code. If global dot selected underscore workers is greater than zero. This is a new variable uh, that workers will count up if they're selected and count down if they're deselected as they're being selected or deselected. We can't put it in the step event, otherwise it would count up and down continuously. So we put it in the selected and deselected events. Um, so this will count how many workers are selected. Then we have sprite underscore index equals button underscore worker. This of course is why you need to know the name of the sprite so you can put it in the code. And then beneath that we have if instance underscore exists in parentheses worker underscore counter equals false. Uh, that checks whether or not there is an object worker underscore counter in the room. Uh, this is a very useful uh, function, uh, especially in menus and GUIs. And I I, uh, I think this is the first time I've used it on, in this engine. I'm not sure. But by default, if you have an if statement with a function like this, uh, it'll... Uh, only do it if it's true. If you put equals false, they'll do equals false. So this is asking if there is not a worker underscore counter, then we create an instance uh, underscore counter with instance underscore create in parentheses x comma y comma worker underscore counter and parentheses and you're all set. So if there isn't one, make one. And then uh, we end with a curly bracket to end the if global dot selected workers is greater than zero. 
and we have an else statement, which means if it is not greater than zero, in fact, it is equal to zero, we have sprite underscore index equals blank, which is our blank sprite. It's invisible. You don't see it. You're all set. So you do not see it if there are none selected or you're in a menu choosing uh, to build something or to move something. So that ends our, uh, our first object. Our second object is worker underscore counter. Now, in the step, we uh, need just a little bit of code. If global.selected underscore worker is equal zero, which means our non selected instance underscore destroy. This is our way of hiding this object. That's why we create it in the uh, step event of the other object. Because we use a draw event, not a sprite, and we can't have a sprite for everything, we can't just reassign a sprite. We just destroy it and recreate the object. So in this draw event, uh, an event we do have not used a lot in my series, uh, it's literally when you draw the sprite or images that represent the objects. It's when GameMaker does that. And uh, we have if global.menu is equal to zero in a box because I forget how to code uh, draw the variable. There's a function. I just didn't want to figure it out. I just drag in boxes. Uh, so we drag over the uh, if variable, which is underneath control, and it looks like an octagon. And for variable, just put global.menu, and the rest of the default should be OK. Value is 0 and operation equal to. And then we have in blocks, also from the control, we have a draw variable. Right next to your check variable. Draw the value of global.selected underscore workers. X should be 0, Y should be 0, and relative box should be checked. Uh, and uh, that's it for worker underscore counter. Um, we just go ahead and draw it and it will be in the same font as our other variables so we don't have to worry about that now the editing um, is in might be in the um, I'll go to that last the first editing is in the units with ship underscore worker or anyone you want to do this uh, if you want to do it for more objects you'll just have to duplicate the variable like I said uh, um, on the objects uh, so in uh, left pressed and global left released, that's when uh, our select and deselect events happen. So for left pressed, we go into our little thing of code here that says if so, uh, when, when we have the code selected equals one, we put in the code global dot selected underscore workers plus equals one, and then we have um, else select equals zero global dot selected underscore workers minus equals one which of course adds or minuses one from the original variable that's what plus equals or minus equals means then we have the same thing in global uh, left released uh, it should be if global dot cursor equals one that event uh, if statement in there there should be like three or four um, if select uh, if select equals one it has select equals zero so we put global dot selected underscore workers equals one and when selected equals one, global dot selected underscore workers plus equals one. So when we're selecting it, we add one. When we're deselecting it, we subtract one. Keeps the counter up to date, but not in a step event because I would just make it go crazy. Now the other thing is, uh, if you have a selected object and you go into fuel, and you will, the unit will always be selected when it goes to gather fuel in a building resource. The issue with that is when it comes out, it's not selected. So when it collides with a fuel building, you need to have it deselect it and affect the variable accordingly. So in create of object get underscore fuel, have the uh, in the create event put global dot selected underscore workers minus equals one. What this ensures is every time we have the get fuel object, it means we're taking a selected worker and deselecting it, and it will be recreated in a deselected form. And uh, I believe that is it. Uh, the only thing you may have to edit is um, check your buttons. For instance, uh, make main and left released. You should have global.menu equals zero. In all of your buttons, you should have this. On the, when they're clicked, you should put in uh, global.menu equals zero you may need this code um, the symptoms of this so you can troubleshoot it is if it selects but you go and it shows a thing and you go into a menu so it disappears and then there's no menu and try to select and it doesn't show up 
that's the problem so go to the button that you clicked and add that piece of code on the click for instance I need it on make main uh, make worker is another one you need on left pressed find the one that says uh, applies to self you need global dot menu equals zero and if there's an instroy, instance underscore destroy with it put the global dot menu equals zero above the instance underscore destroy so you'll need that for make a fighter and make a tank and all all of those when it clicks you'll have to do that so how to actually put it in your game is to go to the level and place it in the GUI uh, I'll delete it for you um, worker tracker and I put it to 1616 and you just place it somewhere in here I'll place it right here I think that looks good so there's enough of a space and then that's all you have to worry about space out all your workers along the GUI all your units that you're tracking along the GUI you'll need to do this for every one um, and uh, okay play select stage one skip the cutscene we select it a little worker emblem pops up with a little number one but one is boring so let's go ahead and make a main building and make some more workers now we have one now I have two you can see the two one zero disappears now if I select two of them and they're right here and I go into a menu the thing will not be there unfortunately it lines up perfectly with this worker may have to deal with that uh, but I'm going to click it and then it's two again because it's a different menu so now I go over and select that and now I have three selected so it all works it's all nice and fancy oh and mission complete because I killed that guy too um, so there you have it a uh, simple GUI for the different units you'll have to change some stuff like I said when uh, troubleshooting and debugging this if uh, it doesn't come if it works the first time then you go into a menu and it doesn't work the second time look at the buttons and add that code global dot uh, menu equals zero on the click event when it clicks otherwise um, like I've said in all my videos I do need suggestions I have had some I think I have two more on my list of things to do um, mostly engine tweaks uh, no major major features uh, except for multiplayer multiplayer and game maker will not work you need each other's IP addresses uh, with your friend in order to play with each other live this is a pain there is no way to share each other's IP conveniently over the internet without putting yourself at risk for viruses and you actually have to know your IP address so it's just too inconvenient it's not worth it um, you can't get lobbies in this it just wouldn't work um, if anybody has anything to say in contradictory to that, just make a video and post it as a response to this. Go ahead, but I will not be doing a multiplayer tutorial. Uh, otherwise, um, what was I going to say? Uh, so, other suggestions besides multiplayer, feel free to ask. I will get to it eventually. If you do not request it, I will not do it. Um, other than that, thanks for watching.